Okay, so we have the brooms up, Raxberts versus Manticores. Yes! Grand final. And Raxberts have control, so we've got Hussein and Clementine round as the Raxberts beaters, um, playing against a double male beater of Warhurst and Dean. Manticores with the quaffle control after Grouse keeps it straight down the field. And Manticore's getting blood to control. Yeah, Dean out back, getting blood to control. Mailing's gonna see if he can drive through here. And he can! Great piece of blood to play. Set up Mailing there by Dean Rodhouse. Yeah, it was an interesting play. Dean got control by beating Hussein and then just pushed straight onto Clem, beating her and messing with the bludges behind hoops, allowing Callum just to drive through like he always does. I think it'll be interesting to see whether the experts can physically at least compete with the Manticores, because I think if they don't, they're going to have a very, very tough game of it. Yeah, they're starting Jake Nash as well, who's definitely there, probably one of the most physical keepers. Um, we'll see how he lines up against Callum. He's and they've going got be... Jared Grouse as well, who's known as a very, very physical player. So hopefully, with those two together, they should be able to do something against... Now, with Jake Nash behind the hoops, they can expose his height to get some alley -oop plays going. Oh, what a beautiful oh. block by Aaron. Oh, Hussein just throws his bludger away. Callum wasn't there at all for that block, and he, that block from Aaron just allowed it to happen. Crowd screaming legs there. And Callum just runs around through an open hoop. So that was good, called a good goal. That was just, I think, a warning for the contact on Callum. Um, so we've got Danny coming in as a male beater for the Raxperts, which should hopefully change their chances in the beater game. Danny going up against his old team. Um, so hopefully he should be able to make a difference. Should be interesting. Takes out successive manacles. Beater scrambling behind hoops. No real support. Jarrett's just looking for a way to drive through. Meg's getting back. Jay misses a shot, Jake Nash scrambling, Dean's there to beat him. Coffle back in the midfield. Picked up by Jackie. <laughs> bit, of, bit of a scramble there. That was a back to his call on the man to go chase over behind contact, I believe. It was just a warning. Danny competing with the bludges but not able to get control back. Oh, Callum, and Callum dive. doing a beautiful intercept there, just not clinching on, but Cass there to bail him out anyway. Classic Manticore's play, eating up those passes over the hoops. Our experts really need to stop those if they have a chance of winning this. Yeah, Grass looks dangerous in the drive, but he doesn't look like he's going to be able to get through. Uh, he doesn't seem to have been able to get close enough to really put that ball through the hoop, and I think he just really needs to grab that ball, put his hand through before he even releases the ball. Yeah, now Dean, I mean, uh, Chad up here. And that's a missed ball. There's no bludges here on defense. Williams driving through, hits Mailing on the pass, sinks the shot. Beautiful, and I think that just goes to show Callum Mailing's ability to move around the ball. He passes it off and doesn't just stand there and watch the play. He moves around the hoops as a passing option, forcing Grouse to try and cover him, but failing anyway. Yeah, really good pressure by Chad as well, making Denny throw it. Mailing misses the beat, just no bludges. I think Denny needs to switch on a bit more in terms of really converting those beats. I don't think he needed to make that beat on Mailing. He could have just kept the pressure there, which would have forced them to try and make a play. But missing that beat just allowed them to have their own way with the game. Raxberts can't play the Manticore's game. They need to play the Raxberts game. Oh, good fake there. Takes out Meg. Jake Nash to the alley-oop play. And this is a Raxberts super play. I mean, they got bludger control and they got a goal out of it. That's perfect Absolutely. for them and what they want. And so I mentioned before, I think they need to be looking for Jake Nash behind the hoops. He's, just got, he's the tallest person on the field. He's really good behind the hoops, the alley -oop plays. And uh, Grass can always set him up with the uh, threat of the drive and then the pass over the top. Manticore's doing a beautiful play there where they had a second beater just behind Denny. Meg threw it, Meg made a pass, took the beat, and the other beater just moved on to them. Chad again coming up here to pressure. Oh, Mailing again open on the far side. 
Callum Mailing doing it all. What a beautiful receiving threat and a driver. I mean, they can do. He can do anything. That man. You gotta. You gotta watch Mailing. Can't leave. Give him that much space around the hoops. Forty ten already. I get the feeling Manticore's warm blood, both because this all they narrowly lost in the finals of last year's Mud Bash, and they got beaten by the Raxfords earlier this year. Danny misses the throw on Chad. Both Manticore's bears pushing up, takes out Grouse. They're going to look for the rebound run here. Brody Nash gets to it before Williams. Beaters all coming in here. Denny's going to hit Chad behind. Yeah, Denny gets the control for the experts. And that's Denny beat. Oh, is the Emma going in? Oh, Emma gets the, gets the club. Oh, and mailing. a golden mailing. That was very unlucky for the Raxberts. Meg just went in there and bailed Chad out, which left all of their defences Crucial little tap down. there by Emma on the floor as well. Grass was about to dive on that quaffle, but she was able to tap it out, and man was able to get Mailing the was right ball. there for yeah. her, yeah. Good field awareness in terms of she might not have been able to pick up the ball, but she was able to just flick it off knowing where Mailing was. And I think the Raxberts just need to keep their heads here. Like, they may be down, but that's not the end of the world. Nice little they fake there by always Sane. Come back. Good pressure by Clem here. And it looks like the beat is just mopping up behind there. They're doing very well as a male beater, considering this is his first tournament. Mentico's moving up. They're out of range now, so they can sort of take their time. Sort of ease off the pressure on Mailing to do everything. Clem's blocking the napalm here from Chad. Trying to get to Hussain. Able to pass it to the other side. Hits it middle hoop. It's too oh. easy. That was a really good play by Chad, like, and by Williams as well. Knowing that Hussain got pushed to the far side and was able to bring the cobble back to this side where there's no... Uh... Mailing's doing a perfect cut there as well. Yeah. Williams hitting him while in motion. And Mailing just converting it. It's very like the last game we commented, Mailing will just eat up those easy opportunities of him in front of the hoops all day. Yeah, and it's three in a row he's actually scored off receiving passes rather than him Rather going, than him just drives. Yeah. So providing a different threat from usual. Grouse tries to hit the pass out back, dodges a bludger though. Mailing mops it up. Passes a little bit too low for the Raxburg behind the hoops there. They're going to probably take their time a bit more. Dean with the wrap. Mailing again Just receiving. Can he go through? Tries to pass out to Cass. Williams with the re I'm not sure he needed off. to make that pass there. Uh, Williams restarting at the quaffle here. He's got Jonathan the open hoop. Hits the pass. Oh, good block by Grouse. That whistle down was due to a yellow card on Jenkins there for a behind contact on Williams. Meaning that Bodie Nash is now a keeper and they're down a chaser. Pass is a bit short by Williams. Jonathan was free on that open hoop, but. He just had to spend that extra second reaching down to the ball. Yeah, which just dropped on him. Grouse to just get onto him. Grouse here being a driving threat as always, especially in the mud. Oh, great block by Cass. And Mailing just dives in. And this is a no bludger opportunity if Cal actually wants to make a one. Oh, he's got Sane on the far side. Dean's going to do yeah, something Yeah, Dean's going to block him out. Oh, hits him. Hands go up by the refs. Cal Waltz is in. That's interesting there. <laughs> Reese top play there. Oops. Looks like the goal was good. Yeah. Um, there was an advantage call from Logan there due to some possibly illegal tackling, I believe. Probably. Yeah, it looked like some illegal contact there. Mailing just waltzing around into the open hoop. A 70 10 to the Manicors. They are running away with this game a little bit. Uh, Raxburgs can't really get their offense together and penetrate this defense. Yeah, I think Denny just needs to be a bit calmer in terms of beating. I think he's rushing the beats on Mailing a bit more. Um, yeah. Mailing won't take the shots if he doesn't have to. So if Denny can just wait a bit. Oh, good good beat by Dean. And he turns around and gets and Bodie as well. 
Really good by Dean. He sends the opportunity to be go aggressive. No budges. One, two. Score by Williams. The classic manticles. And that's all you need to do, even though Callum's streaming down the pitch due to having an easy goal, Williams is always there to support and that allows things to just move forward a little And it bit comes more. about, rack shirts are trying to push up their bludgers so high uh, to get bludger control back and we just saw that Clem got caught way out, out backfield, wasn't able to get the bludge back in time and Manicles just rebound too quickly. Mm -hmm. Denny being a bit indecisive in terms of offence, getting beat by Dean when he was looking the other way. And that's something that Denny can't let happen if he's going to move up. Yeah, we've got Anthony that's Hogan on beat. here at keeper. But Dean, still gets, Dean still gets the bludger. Oh, great beat by Dean on the, on the broom there. Slides in there by Mailing. Denny with the miss beat. They've got no bludgers back on defence again. Denny's in the car park. You can see it in Callum's face. He knows that he can make it a goal if he wants. It's just whether he wants to. Yeah, look for him to hit Williams on this far side. There we go. Easy goal. Oh. Well, good scramble by Cass there. Denny's coming back with the bludgers. Oh, good, good by Cass. But recovered by Jenkins, flicks it back to Ant. So that's a yellow card on Daniel Jenkins for tackling a player <laughs> without the ball. That's a tackle on James Williams. Um, hopefully they should be able to convert off this. But they're not. I think Callum's just getting a bit lazy with his passes being 70 up. He can just relax a bit and not focus on driving. Uh, interesting that they put Ant on a uh, keeper. Uh, he's not uh, known as a keeper and uh, plays played his whole uh, career at Chase. So this is an interesting decision. Uh, I think we'll likely see um, either Jake or even uh, Grouse at keeper is okay. You're not going to make those shots after over mailing if he's paying attention. Yeah, it's a bit ambitious. <laughs> Blame me subbing on. It's an interesting choice. You you can't really even say it's a lack of experience because everyone knows you yeah, just don't shoot on mailing there, but oh, and, and with the But two beaters back in defense, he's not gonna be able to do much. Pass out of Jenkins. Jenkins back on the pitch after the yellow card. And Meg just shuts it down there. Easy beat. With Callum shutting down the passing options. Callum can just relax a bit right now. They're up 70. So he can just take his time, see the passes, and if they're there, they're there. If he needs to drive, he needs to drive. Take his time and relax a bit. Especially with Williams there as an option. Good pass by Blamey. Williams converts very easily. Really good. Pass out in front. Williams able to run onto it. Shoot that right hoop. And that's a good play by Chad as the beater as well. He just needs to put the pressure on. Things open up. Yeah, we see Jake Nash coming on a keeper here with uh, Ned Smith. Right, so it's really need to change something up here. They need to be doing something else. Maybe a double male beater set might be interesting. But they need to get this blood to control off them because they haven't had it forever. And they now have a no bludger opportunity again. Yeah, same with the miss beat. He's 20 metres away. Mailing's jogging up here. He's going to try and throw it to Clem. He's got blaming. Know if that's going to happen. Got blaming on the open hoop. Williams in the other hoop. Goes in the middle of the two of them. And the bludger's back almost now, back. Yeah. Callum still has the ball. Oh. oh. Even worst case scenario there. Missing the pass and they still able to score. Callum working hard there. Never going to put him down, still the finals and still working like a workhorse. 110. A lot of people coming to this game are expecting Raxperts to really push the manacles and it's uh, starting. I think starting it really comes hand. down to beta play. Um, the Raxperts have just been very, very unsuccessful in terms of maintaining or even gaining control at all. Um, I think Denny might have gained control once. Um, but then lost it a few plays yeah, later. Yeah, they're just losing it so much in offense and they're just getting rebounded upon every single play. Yeah, there have been five or six Look. no bludger opportunities that Callum's just eaten up. 
And one or two where they've actually not even scored just because they've been a bit too calm about it. And that happens to the manacles. They play their beaters so far back. If you want to gain control, you have to push so far up. But you have to understand that the chasers have to slow ball it a bit, wait for the beaters. And you can't just make a rash pass and give up uh, quaffle control because, yeah, mailing will just rebound. I think the Rexpers just need to be calm. I think Hussain here is way too high forward. Manacles just passing around. They can take their time, use their options. Chad just pressuring, waiting for the chases to open this up. Is, this is it there. They got Williams in front of the hoops. Nash comes out of medium. I think it was a bit of behind body contact there. So this is the yellow card for behind contact. And with no bludges. It's an easy goal. Uh, Williams going for the double goals there, trying to get into the soccer goals as well. Unsuccessful, no. the mud uh, held that up a bit. Definitely making sure that the quaffle takes a while to reset so the Manticles have some time to run back. Stopping those quick breaks that the Rexpirts can do with people like Grouse and Ned, who are very, very fast on their feet. Bringing Grouse back out. And you can hear Williams marshalling the troops here, telling them the snitch about to come on, that Rexpirts are going to def defensive seek. Oh, great catch by Denny. Oh! oh. Ned with the short middle hoop, but they've got to... Okay, got to get back got on D. Got a bit of life of the Rackspets now. They got the bludger control scored, and we've seen that the two goals they have scored, they've gone bludger control and scored the goal. That was a great to catch by more. Denny, able to catch the ball that Meg threw at him. I'm actually more interested in the beta play. They got to hold on to this, and they've given control straight up. Matt scrambled, Jared diving in. Same with the ball. Callum taking a back seat in that offense, not needing to really go hard. They're 90 points up. It was really disappointing by the Rax, but so they gave Bludge Control straight, straight back up to the Mana Cores, and they're going to have to do it all again. Yeah, I think Clem here just shows that her inexperience in the Bludger game really yeah. cost them, and in a Bludger oh. offense. I think what the Rexperts are doing well on offense is sort of trying to time a movement with a, with a beta play. But if that beta play doesn't really work, they're not really compensating for it. They're not pulling back and like just passing the ball around. They're just trying to force yeah. things too hard. Yeah, they're trying to with that that one play. They're trying to make it a one play offense. They're trying to like bludges score, but the problem is it's getting blocked every time, and then they just rebound. And the only time it's worked, the only two points they've scored, as you said, is when they gained bludger control back. It's when Denny managed to like fight his way through. Denny with the miss yeah. beat, and yet they still try and go for it. There was a miss beat. If they turn this over again, as we we're talking about. Oh, Jared misses the shot. Jared should have driven there. Yeah, he had he had the open hoop on the, the right side. Mailing is have to, having to cover two hoops there. There's a no bludger opportunity right now. No. <laughs> this is a no bludger opportunity. Seeker's on here. We've got Bodie trying to block out John Warhurst. Andrew Colfar snitch. Lower, lower, lower. A little tap beat by Chad. Williams at the... Bit of an errant pass. It doesn't really matter. It's probably the bit first time. bad pass we've actually seen from the Manacles. Oh, uh, there have been a few from Cal earlier, but... Nice man. Hasn't that really one went been, way hasn't out really back. That much. The interesting thing with the Manticles is the way that they play. Their big errant passes, if they do go a bit wide, they just go straight over the top of the hoops and they just give them a bit of time to reset. Dean looking to seek a beat here. Giving John a bit of time on the snitch. John had a bit of experience with Colf um, catching against him last game. But Bodie's got a big body and John yeah. will have to continually get past Yeah, he's Bodie. got a body size on him. He's going to need a bit of beta help, but they're only going to be able to do it on offense. Progressing here, Jenny subbed off, which is an interesting decision. Well, beta Two battle. Just hitting each other. And the air and oh, great flick. Really Straight to <laughs> Dean just cleans it up, though. The Rexpers don't seem to have many options as chasers. They're trying to make one play pass, one pass offenses. They're not passing much, whereas the Manticores, in alternative, are really passing the ball around and really doing oh, stuff with the quaffle. Great movement by Williams there. 
Williams there really using his steps to get a goal there. Yeah, dodging, ducking and diving straight through. No brooms down call there. <laughs> Game actually did not stop and everyone dismounted. It's sad how many times that actually happens in a game. <laughs> Dean pressing up because he knows he's got Meg behind. Danny back on for Hussein. Interesting call by Grass there, <laughs> running straight to the slide that Meg was on, straight into her. <laughs> Again, Williams working in front of the hoops. Oh, good block. Good block. By Nash. They're giving Williams too much space there. Too much space in front of the hoops to work. I think they're overcompensating for mailing. I mean, you can't go mailing too much space, but once mailing stops eating them up, Williams will do it instead. Um, Meg blocks, but Denny Gary gains budget control for the Raxperts here. That's fine. Still got the quaffle out back with Ned. And uh, engaged over the hard boundary line. Then yeah. Really yeah, and they've made that call there with Ned regaining possession. The shot goes wide. Shot was ambitious to begin with. Seeing clearly in the secret battle, body, body just using that large body to box Warhurst out, and Warhurst getting tired. I think Warhurst needs to sub soon, otherwise, Cole won't have to do anything. Yeah, it looks like Jonathan's got the yellow headband on again, ready for the sub. And good play by Manacles there. They understand yep. that they had no options up. Just take it back, slow ball it, bring it back to halfway. Wait Williams' for talk is in. what really gets them through a lot yeah, of their absolutely. tough plays. Cass open again. Oh, great fake. Yeah, what right a fake through. and a goal. That's just class. The Manticles all bail each other out here, yeah. If Callum doesn't make the play, James will or Cass will or Blamey will. Basically, they can all score. And if Callum doesn't want it, one of the others will. Yeah, there's no weak link in that chain. Warhurst well, still going hard at the snitch, but this game's blowing out. John trying to duck that. <laughs> With Colf not even doing anything, once he gets down to one hand, he's going to be very energetic and will be able to stave off a lot of the time. And we see Manacles with the sub. What? Jonathan what? coming on. What? And this will be a very quick fast break. Yeah, it's a good block by Chad there on defense as well. Yeah. Callum being given the ball. Still no blood driving. Bit of an errant pass from Callum there. Emery game. With James getting the ball right oh, in front of the hoops. Game with the fake. Two fakes. Get to oh, the Jared with a good stop there. That was an arm pin, but I thought that was fine. And dunk it over him. Cam with the... Oh! Just decides to get a bit of air time there. So that was a red card on Nash there um, for a second yellow. I believe it was a bit of a hind contact on Williams. It's unfortunate. They go down that player for two minutes. They're already down by 1.30. And they lose their, big, their biggest body on the field as well. Great play by Williams. And that's a catch. Oh. That's, a, that's a catch the Manticles. Jonathan. Seems legit. With the raise. The snitch ref seems happy. Snitch tail. And that's game. Manticles take out Melbourne Mud Bash 2016. So 180 oh to 20. I don't know, I feel like the Raxburgs just got a bit lost there. They had, I feel like they had a plan coming in. It wasn't working and no one really did anything about it. They just sort of let themselves get beat. Yeah, Their beaters weren't being successful in what they were doing and the chasers weren't changing their game plan to alter it. Yeah, absolutely. The Manacles beaters just outplayed them in every, in every capacity. And that allowed the chasers to outplay them as they would. Yeah. And we, we didn't see Mailing get stopped at all, really. I mean, we're, talk, we're talking about Jared, talking about Nash, but neither of them are able to stop the driving force that is the truck. And great support by Blamey, Williams, Cass. Yep. All chiming in with goals. There was, there was a classic Manticles game, and the Raxperts just let the Manticles dictate pace.